This week's Weekly Roundup, we're seeing another mishmash of stuff, from power monitoring to LoRa to sodium-based SVCs. Oh, I've also added an index in the description, so you can look things up quickly. Hang on, I've seen other YouTubers doing that. You're copying, aren't you? Maybe. First up, a Kickstarter from the Make 100 initiative. This attempts to put an ESP8266 on your keychain. It's a great idea, but personally I would have spent a bit more time reducing the size of the thing. Mine isn't really a maker product, but included it because it's a cool idea. It's essentially a modular controller allowing you to place buttons, styles and sliders in any combination you want. Bots Alive is yet another robot slash stem product, but this one is different as it has inbuilt AI and computer vision algorithms. So you can get it to avoid obstacles, path tracking through mazes, and interacting with other robots. It seems to be taking off. The Inv IoT U1 is an Arduino-based board that contains an AtMega328, I think, although it's a little unclear, LCD, SD, RTC, buzzer buttons, LEDs, and sockets for an NRF24 and ESP. It's a nice little board if you want a quick human interface. If you've ever had to connect probes to terminal blocks, then you'll know how it can be a real pain. Probe to bolt is a pretty simple concept. It's just a bit of shaped metal with a bent bit at one end, so you can attach a probe. Simple, but effective. Remember those CDs or DVD storage boxes that could eject the disc of your choice? Well, a chip CZ is like that, but for small electronic components. You just select the component that you need from your PC, and it'll eject the drawer and show you where it is using an LED. This is great, and certainly beats my current method. The only issue I see with it is the price. Hmm... Oh man, there's so much garbage on Indiegogo, it's tough wading through it all. The Aerobot 2 is a new SBC that contains an ARM Cortex-M3 and M0 core with 2.4GHz RF, FPGA, codec chip, 9DOF IMU, Ethernet and USB ports. And also SD, JTAG, Pi compatible GPIO header and socket for XB. The board can be set into user mode where the Cortex-M3 controls and programs the M0 and FPGA or system mode, where the Cortex-M0 is a bootloader and communicates with a PC via USB. Parents of teens would understand this next one. I've had four of them, so I know what it's like when your teen gets carried away when playing games. The ATX24 is, well, it's an idea in concept, but I wouldn't call it good. It provides a method where you can effectively turn off the PC at predetermined times. It sits in between the power supply and the motherboard. Yeah, well, this would be bypassed in a matter of minutes, really. Crown Supply has a handful of pre-launch products. The Hornbill is in pre-launch on Crown Supply. It's an ESP32 based board in various styles that seems to have LiPo battery management, but not really clear what else. It's made by the same guys who made the Explore M3, which you might have seen on Hackaday. This one is a low-cost NAS based on the MediaTek MT7621 SOC, which is a SOC designed for NAS solutions. It contains a dual-core 880 MHz MIPS CPU, and 5 port gigabit switch, and I guess a bunch of SATA ports. Will be an interesting one when it goes live. The Pigeon 1 is also in pre launch. It's a small board with an STM32 MCU, RS485 interface, and CC1120 and CC1190 transceiver radio chips, which operate in the 868 and 915 MHz frequencies. Element 14 have launched the Bitscope Blade series for Raspberry Pi, which comes in three flavours the Uno, which is aimed for makers the Duo, aimed for those wanting desktop or servers, and the Quattro, for creating compute clusters. Adafruit have just released their beta of the CircuitPython, which is a fork of MicroPython, but adds in support for the SAMD21 and ESP MCUs, and adds in a lot of APIs for hardware. It's a great move for those not wanting to get their hands too dirty in the world of electronics. We're starting to see more and more sodium-type SBCs coming out. This is a great move. However, what I'd like to see is some sort of standardization going on. Modules are coming out with a mix of Pi Zero type compatibility and a range of other formats. Here's another Sodium SBC with a carrier board in a Bega One style. It contains TI's Cortex A8 Citara SOC running at 1 GHz, either 1 GB or 256 MB of RAM, 1 GB NAND flash, 8 MB NOR flash, dual gigabit Ethernet, LCD with touch, two USB, three SDIO ports, and a bucket load of serial interfaces. Unfortunately, since the format isn't common, they are expensive. Inforce Computing came out with their Snapdragon 410C based board a while ago. Now they are selling a low cost version called the Inforce 6309L at around 85 US dollars. But the catch is you have to order 100 minimum. 
Contains 1 gig DDR3 RAM, 8 gig EMC, SD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, dual MIPI CSI, USB 2, HDMI, and the usual Pi GPIO header. Over at Tindy, there's a 4-channel ITC multiplexer breakout, which comes in handy if you have a lot of ITC buses or ITC devices with conflicting addresses. It also has voltage level translation between 1.8 through to 5 volts. Or if you just want a bi-directional voltage level shifter for an ITC bus, then this one will do the trick, based on the TCA9406. Sleepy Pi is a Pi hat that allows you to control power to the Pi. It runs off battery or DC jack and contains an Atmega329, which can be programmed from the Pi, and RTC so you can shut down your Pi and power it up on demand. It also has a current monitor so you can keep track of just how much juice you use. This board is yet another energy monitor based on the ATM90E36. It's not really a product that you can plug and play, but a development kit for checking out the capabilities of this chip. You'll need your own split core current transformers. This breakout board is pretty simple. It allows you to solder up an RTL8710 module and breaks out everything for easy access. It contains the all important reset button for easy programming. Coin cell lipos are starting to be very common now, but chargers seem to be fairly scarce in comparison. This is a simple lithium ion coin cell charger. Circuit Technologies have put up their USB oscilloscope on Tindy, but it's more expensive there. Just get it from their website as it's on sale at half the price. If you regularly don't have the time, then Adafruit can give it to you. This little breakout is designed for a Pi, but it can be used on anything. Oh man, when I first look at these things they are available, but when I come back to them they're out of stock. The Stem Terror is a great idea, made by an Aussie mate of mine, JP Liu. He's made several other products, all of high quality. This one is a breadboard with inbuilt Atmega328 and Atmega16U2. Two MCUs giving you 21 GPIOs. Works with pretty much all the IDEs and comes with a Lego compatible bottom. Just plug it in your PC and go. Over on the cheap side of town we have a voltage and current monitor accessible from I2C, capable of handling up to 36 volts but at only 400 milliamps, and a low LIN node MCU clone board. And Analog Lamb have two LoRa modules based on the Semtech SX1278. This one is capable of 15km transmission, and this one up to 10km. If you're still in a country with active GSM, then Ellie Crow have a SIM868 based module, which gives you GSM, Bluetooth, and GPS capabilities. And a handy ESP8266 based board for beginners gives you a small breadboard and a bunch of Grove ports along with an ESP12E module.